Hey guys, it's me Soren, back with another video. Today is day nine of Hidden Figures, and today's Hidden Figure is Nina May McKinney, who was born June 12th, 1912, and died May 3rd, 1967, who was an American actress. Dubbed the Black Garbo, as in Greta Garbo, in Europe, McKinney was one of the first Black American film stars in the United States, as well as one of the first Black Americans to appear on British television. Nina was born Nanny Mame McKay on June 12, 1912 in Lancaster, South Carolina. By 1920, her mother had relocated to Savannah, Georgia, working as a cook for white lodgers. Nanny remained in Lancaster, living with her father and paternal grandmother, with her father supporting the family as a delivery man for a local drugstore. Later that year, her mother remarried and migrated to New York, leaving her in the care of her father and grandmother. After the death of her grandmother, Nanny was shuffled between relatives, working for a time as a domestic, teaching herself to dance, and discovering a talent for acting in small productions at the Lancaster Training School. Around 1925, at age 13, she moved to Manhattan to stay with her mother and stepfather, and in mid-1927 began dancing and singing around Harlem's speakeasies. She eventually became close with Bessie Smith's pianist, Porter Granger, who wrote two songs specifically for her. Nanny recorded the songs, but they were never released. In 1928, she recorded two more blues numbers with Gannett Records, Do What You Did Last Night, and There's Been Some Changes Made. The songs were moderately successful, and as a result, Nanny was brought on to the Blackbirds of 1928 Theater Review as a chorus girl, now going by the name Nina May McKinney. The show ran at the Liberty Theater for a successful 518 performances, making it one of the longest running and most successful shows of its genre on Broadway. Early October 1928, during Blackbird's last weeks at the Liberty Theater, a director named King Veter arrived in New York searching for actors for his upcoming all-black sound film, Hallelujah. After seeing McKinney, he said, Nina May McKinney was third from the right in the chorus. She was beautiful and talented and glowing with personality. He cast her in the film. Nina and her mother moved to Memphis and then Arkansas to film before arriving in Culver City, California for shooting at the Metro Goldwyn Meyer Studios. Just me in my eye. <laughs> On December 5, 1928, after the lead, Honey Brown, was injured, 16-year-old McKinney was chosen to replace her as the new star of Hallelujah, making her the first Black American woman to lead a major motion picture production. Somebody just rang my doorbell. I'm back. <laughs> she recorded two numbers from the film, Swanee Shuffle and If You Want My Love, You Gotta Do More Than That. Her signature dance for the Swanee Shuffle was a clear influence on the style of many black actresses who followed, including Dorothy Dandridge and Lena Horne. In May 1929, McKinney signed a five-year contract with MGM, making her the first black American major Hollywood film star. She refused to take the roles of servants or maids, playing glamorous, fully realized characters that were hugely influential on the black bombshell actresses of the 1930s that came after her. Hallelujah was an immediate success and secured her place as America's latest Hollywood star. Veter was nominated for an Oscar for his directing of Hallelujah and McKinney was praised for her role. When asked about her performance, Veter told audiences, Nina was full of life, full of expression, and just a joy to work with. Someone like her inspires a director. W.E.B. Dubois also wrote a glowing review of Hallelujah in The Crisis, the official publication of the NAACP, stating, It is the sense of real life that marks Hallelujah as epoch-making. Five months after the review, McKinney covered both The Crisis and The Pittsburgh Courier. The Courier wrote, Nina May McKinney, famous talkie star, is considered as perhaps the most outstanding screen star of the race today. Over the next year, McKinney filmed various movies, including The Bugle Sounds, Manhattan Serenade, and They Learned About Women. In between filming, she performed at the Club Apex and Club Montmartre and carried on affairs with both men and women. Eventually, over the course of her life, she would marry and divorce six times. On December 30th, 1929, the Cabaret Review Harlem Scandals opened at the Lincoln Theater with Nina as the star. But by late January 1930, McKinney had grown tired of California. She hired a new manager who arranged a tour of the Midwest for her across Chicago, Detroit, St. Louis, Kansas City, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. 
Returning to Los Angeles in June, Nina and her mother moved into the Dunbar Hotel, where throughout the summer, Nina performed at a series of private parties and mingled with the likes of Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington. Also during this time, she married the 23-year-old middleweight boxer named William Gorilla Landon Jones, who bought her a $6,000 Lincoln convertible coupe as a wedding present. McKinney, however, left him after only six months of marriage, boarding the SS Bremen on December 5th and sailing from New York to France. For the next four months, she and the cast of Hallelujah embarked on a European tour to promote their successful film. On December 13th, a stage review of Hallelujah opened in Europe, where it remained for the next three weeks with immense crossover success. After performing all afternoon, McKinney would then spend evenings singing at the Monseigneur Club in Paris. Throughout January and February 1931, the review appeared in Cannes, Monte Carlo, Berlin, and Serbia, returning to France in early March. After the show closed in the spring, the troupe boarded the SS Lafayette back to the United States. Throughout the spring of 1931, McKinney performed in theaters around Harlem, Astoria, and Brooklyn, and in June 1931, returned to the silver screen as a supporting actress in the film Safe in Hell. McKinney played a hotel proprietor who befriends a New Orleans party girl on the run, and her performance was called the best thing in the picture. Nina opened 19, 1932 excuse me, as the headliner at the Lafayette Theater and then left for a tour of the East Coast and Midwest, appearing in New Jersey, Ohio, and Washington, D.C. for the next five months. In between touring, McKinney filmed two short soundies with Vitaphone called Pie Pie Blackbird and Passing the Buck. Returning to New York in July, she went straight into rehearsals for new productions. For the next six months, she headlined shows in Brooklyn, on Broadway, at the brand new Hollywood restaurant, and at the Harlem Opera House. Becoming bi-continental due to her success overseas with Hallelujah, McKinney returned to Europe in the winter of 1932. She became a top cabaret performer in Europe as one of the first black Americans to perform at the London Palladium and at Shea Florence, performing as part of a royal command performance for King George V. V is five, right? Yes. <laughs> and recording music. Nicknamed the Black Garbo in Europe for her talent and beauty, she expanded the range of possibilities for black artists by continuing her string of immensely successful engagements for several years, headlining at the most popular nightclubs, restaurants, theaters, and cabarets across London, Paris, Prague, Athens, and Budapest. She also hosted BBC radio broadcasts and even performed on national television, making her the first black woman to ever appear on British TV. During this period, she also filmed Sanders of the River alongside legendary black actor Paul Robeson. In early 1935, McKinney returned to the States. Although her contract with MGM had expired in 1933, she went back to Hollywood in 1935 to appear in her final film with them, Reckless, with Jean Harlow. Unfortunately, MGM cut out almost all of her scenes from the movie, and furious, she announced that she'd never film in Hollywood again. McKinney moved from California back to New York for the premiere of Sanders of the River and also began headlining at Harlem's Lafayette Theater, at the Apollo Theater, and at the Cotton Club. She also appeared in the short film The Black Network. She worked in New York for a year before returning to Europe in the spring of 1936. She embarked on a hectic British tour doing four shows a day, followed by engagements in Australia, Morocco, Egypt, and India through 1937. At the end of the year, she took a break from entertaining, living quietly in Sydney, Australia for the next three months. In February 1938, she returned to the United States, working steadily in New York, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and Pittsburgh until the start of World War II. Unable to return to Europe, McKinney kept up her successful career of headlining films, theater shows, and reviews in the United States. Her career slowed down in 1942, and for the next two years, she performed in smaller nightclubs around Harlem, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Montreal, and Baltimore. In 1944, McKinney finally returned to Hollywood, playing in the films Dark Waters and Together Again, and entertaining in nightclubs around San Francisco, Oakland, and Los Angeles. She also toured the South in Washington, D.C. before going back on hiatus until 1949. That year, she starred in the film Pinky, which became one of her best-known roles, and performed in the Stars on Parade review at the Walker Casino with Duke Ellington, Lena Horne, Louis Armstrong, and Billie Holiday. 
1950, she semi-retired from the stage, appearing in only a few shows a year at the Apollo Theater and in engagements across Washington, D.C. and New Jersey. In the mid-1950s, she traveled back overseas for tours across London, Monaco, Greece, and Japan. Fully retiring in 1960, McKinney lived out the rest of her days in New York City. On May 3rd, 1967, she died of a heart attack at the age of 54 at the Metropolitan Hospital in Manhattan. In 1978, McKinney was inducted into the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame, and in 2008, she was honored with a U.S. Postal Service stamp highlighting vintage Black cinema. Her filmography totaled 22 roles. And that's Nina Mae McKinney, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. There will be links and information in the description box. Food for thought as always. See you guys tomorrow with another hidden figure. Peace.